So there are a lot of series in iRacing. They have a ton of cars and a ton of tracks and therefore a lot of combinations to race them on. But there are some that definitely are not as popular as others. And in fact, I'll go as far as to say there are quite a few series in iRacing that are completely dead. I'm sure me saying this leads you to the obvious question of why are these series not as populated? And that's what I'm going to be trying to answer today by looking at eight road racing series that have not had consistent splits for a very, very long time. This video idea is originally from YouTuber DJ YJ. He made a fantastic video covering all kinds of series across all four disciplines in iRacing. And of course, to respect that video, I'm not going to be recovering any of the series that he covered in that video. So I'll leave a link in the description below if you want to watch that one. He used quite an ingenious checklist to quickly describe all of the things right and wrong with the series. However, I have added on one extra category which I think is very important and this is if IRL tracks are in the series if it's a organized racing series that races in real life does it have the real life tracks that series race on in iRacing in the season schedule let's not waste any more time though and get on to the first series this is the classic Lotus Grand Prix series this uses the Lotus 79 um, 1980s ish F1 car and going on our checklist here, we can see, of course, this car is definitely hard to drive being an 80s F1 car. The C license ranking, though, in my opinion, shouldn't really hurt it. You definitely do want to be a little bit of a higher license class to be able to reliably drive these things. The open setup, though, is always going to be a killer for these more niche series. So that's definitely not doing it any favors. This car is quite old. However, it has been updated from the ground up pretty much pretty recently so I kind of put that as a kinda in real life of course F1 is a massive motorsport the most popular in the world so there are a lot of people who definitely like driving these classic F1 cars and I know this is pretty much impossible for iRacing to do if they want their same laser scan quality that they always have, but some more classic, at least classic themed tracks like those 80s F1 tracks, I think would be cool for these series, but I don't honestly want iRacing to commit manpower to that since these are quite niche series. So why is the classic Lotus GP series dead? In my opinion, it's a little bit too niche being classic Formula One. It's quite hard to drive and that open setup is going to make it an even higher barrier to entry for some people who don't know how to make a setup for a car. Now let's move on to the Radical Racing Challenge. This is actually a newer series that was just added last year with the car so the car is quite new and it's an easy beginner car to drive in my opinion. I think a lot of people who would get behind the wheel of it would enjoy it. I think the C license could be a little bit high However, I think putting it to D like we'll see with some other series in this list is a little bit too stacked right now So I guess it does make sense. I kind of see where I racing we're coming from it is a fixed setup So that should definitely be a positive for it and again Like I said car was released last year, so it is pretty damn new There's probably though not a lot of people who follow any kind of radical racing in real life This is gonna be a lot of club racing um, with this car and unless you're maybe be driving in that series uh, I'm sure there's not a ton of people who actively follow it just as a fan but I think it's a pretty enjoyable car and I think most people would enjoy driving it if they gave it a shot and it does race on a lot of the real-life circuits you'd find this thing on in America and Europe and elsewhere so it's a pretty damn good series if you want me to tell you why I think this one is dead I think maybe the C-class rating could be a little high but besides that I think this this is actually quite a fun series. I just don't think the Radical has the notoriety of like a GT3 or, you know, a lower tier formula. So I just don't think it would be that popular. But I'd love to see these lobbies get more popular because the Radical is a very fun car to drive. 
Camel GT is a very interesting series. It uses some classic IMSA GTP cars, not the new ones, the old ones, as well as GTO cars, more specifically, just the Audi A90. But these cars are very hard to drive. I don't think C license would be an issue. Again, you want some people who are a little bit higher skill level to be driving these things around so you can actually have some good racing. I think, again, the open setup doesn't do it very many favors, though, especially with these classic cars. Setups can be a lot of the speed you're going to be getting out of them, and people who don't know how to make them, of course, will not be able to achieve that. The cars are older, however, they still are maintained quite well, and they do actually have a little bit of a following in iRacing, a dedicated fan base, if you will. And again, people do like these classic IMSA and endurance race cars, so on paper, you'd think this would be a pretty popular series. It's fun cars to drive for the people who like that again there's no classic circuits in iRacing however they do race on a lot of the more modern day IMSA circuits like Road America, Daytona, Road Atlanta things like that. I think this series is another one kind of like the classic Lotus GP. It's just one of those classic racing series that not a ton of people are probably going to enjoy. A lot of people are going to struggle to drive the cars. And with the cars being quite old as well, it could be a little bit much to charge $12 for them, at least in my opinion. Next up, we have the Licensed Supercar Series, and this one is actually quite interesting to me. V8 supercars are quite hard to drive. I don't think C License is an issue, and the open setup definitely doesn't do it any favors. However, there is a huge following for V8 supercars in Australia. In fact, it has its own Australia-only server series, which is the only thing like it in iRacing. The cars are quite outdated, though. The IRL cars have changed a lot, especially starting this season and regardless they were getting quite up there in age and there is only two IRL Australian tracks in the series which definitely hurts it only Bathurst and Sandown are present the rest of them are on foreign circuits which definitely is not going to do it many favors however I have definitely noted with this thing that when it is prime Australian uh, server racing time you do definitely get some splits with these cars so so I'm happy the Australians are liking it. I guess it's more of a niche motorsport being only located in Australia and Australia not being a huge country, but I definitely think that this series could get more notoriety if the cars were updated to their 2023 counterparts and maybe some more Australian circuits join the calendar. The Fanatec Global Challenge is kind of a similar story. These cars are definitely getting up there in age. Their real-life counterparts definitely do not race anymore, but these are pretty beginner cars. The D license should not be an issue for them. However, like I've mentioned before, that D license is pretty stacked with some quite compelling series. It is open setup, which I genuinely cannot get the rationale behind from iRacing. Uh, no IRL circuits, obviously, anymore as well because the real-life cars don't really race and I think these are overall pretty enjoyable cars for people who like GT racing I just think this one kind of is a failure because there is so much in D class you got Ferrari challenge F4 uh, Mazda still as well if you want to keep doing that and a ton of other series as well skip barber just to name a couple more so I think this is just one of those series is getting a little up there in age and people just aren't as interested in it anymore the skip barber Mustang challenge is a really weird series. It's one that has actually been added quite new. However, the car is extremely old. It came out in 2010. It is a 13-year-old car. Yes, they're still charging $12 for might I add. It's a tricky car to get a hold of probably for most people. The D license again probably isn't an issue for this car again but stacked with a ton of series so driving this 13 year old Mustang that's not even a current model year of the Mustang or anything like that is going to be quite the big ask however the fix setup should definitely be helping it. It doesn't race anywhere anymore so it doesn't have any kind of real life following and for the tracks it drives on it definitely uses some of those classic American IMSA and IndyCar circuits but again this car is so old I don't think anything is really going to make this series any more relevant I don't even know why iRacing added it because they added it quite recently it's a little weird but regardless it is definitely a dead series 
US Open Wheel C or Indie Lights is definitely the most curious one on this list. It's a quite fun to drive open wheel car. I don't think the C license is hurting it too much. Again, we got F4 in D class and then this is kind of a logical progression um, being up there with F3 as well. The open setup is definitely hurting it though and the car is quite new so it shouldn't be an outdated car problem and it does have a following. People who like IndyCar, I'm sure there are those who follow Indy Lights, but here's the big problem with it, and you probably already knew this when I said Indy Lights, without an IndyCar license anymore, this thing is not really racing on any current IndyCar tracks, which means this thing has just been left out to the wind. IndyCar as a whole on iRacing has completely died since the IndyCar license went over to Motorsport Games. Hopefully now, iRacing might be able to get it back um, since IndyCar has officially moved away from Motorsport Games, but regardless this thing struggles without the IndyCar license, but some fun cars to drive, and I think if people gave them a shot, they would definitely enjoy them. And again, quite an identical story for Formula B Renault 3.5. The cars are quite quick, but they're manageable. I think a lot of people would find them fun. I think definitely a killer for this series, though, is the B license. Way too high, and now with Super Formula and B class, well, this series is doomed. The open setup as well absolutely nukes, I think, any kind of fringe uh, enjoyment left from a casual eye racer just popping in to the series. The car is getting a little up there in age. In fact, the real life series no longer exists anymore, which is definitely, again, going to be a nail in the coffin. It does race on some of its IRL tracks, though. In real life, it did kind of stick to those Western European tracks, so you're going to be finding a lot of those in this series. I think Super Formula mixed with the series no longer existing and the car getting a little bit up there in age, and of course, the open setup uh, never helps any of the these series. So I think Formula Renault 3.5, I sadly got to think it's a little doomed. So let's review. What makes an iRacing series die? We can definitely pick up some patterns from the series we've looked at today. First thing can definitely be the age of the content. It's starting to get up there in age. It might not be as popular and it could be harder for new people to shell out the $12 for a car that's 10 plus years old. Being an open setup series for a series on iRacing that is not super duper popular uh, can definitely hurt people from just jumping in randomly and giving it a shot. I think another important thing is really if it's a real life racing series like V8 Supercars, IndyCar, something like that, it needs to race on its IRL circuits. You can see that here, case in point, with V8 Supercars. Only races on two of its IRL circuits. There are definitely some series on this list that I wish could get more popular. <coughs> Radical. Uh, and there are definitely some series on this list that I don't even know why they exist. <coughs> Skip Barber Mustang Challenge. But regardless, I'm glad all these series exist. There are definitely some niche communities that still run a lot of them on a weekly basis, kind of turning them into some sort of league. And regardless, it gives diversity to iRacing, which is very important. Thank you for watching this video. If you made it this far and enjoyed, a like and a sub would mean a lot. I had a super fun time making it and researching it for this video. Once again, thank you to DJ EJ for this idea. And if you enjoyed this one, you definitely enjoy his video. So that'll be linked down in the description below. But thank you for watching. And I'll see you all later. Have a good one, guys.